All right, welcome to the Whiskey Vault. It's Rare Whiskey Friday. <laughs> and it's kind of a good one, right? right? Welcome to the Whiskey Vault. It's Rare Whiskey Friday. Did I get it? Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's good. Okay, so this is this is a weird one. So quick. Rare Whiskey Friday. It just means whiskey that's hard for the mass populace to get. Right, not necessarily big brands, but brands that are gonna be craft, very little distribution. So things, if you live next to them, then this doesn't apply to you. <laughs> things that would be very tricky to turn into an episode in and of themselves because it's so hard to actually get your hands on, but we collect these whiskeys that are worthy of tasting and reviewing. Or given to us. Or friends. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Free whiskey's free whiskey, That's said, true. The said the mooch. said the mooch. So this is all whiskey from one rep. So that's an uh, awkward pause. Uh, uh. These, uh, these crickets a whole get, other league. This cricket's gonna get worn out, man. Yeah, I don't even know how like how do you handle that level of Okay. Alright, how many bottles? Five? Five bottles. Four? Four. Four bottles. Okay. You just wanna do it all at once, get it out of the way. Or oh, wait, 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 I gotta look or, up his name. I or, I didn't print his name underneath. So while he's now. looking up the name, uh people in the community they send in bottles and we yell they at them do. and call them bastards. As a show of respect and honor and appreciation, if you're a whiskey rep, though, if you're if you're in the industry and you have a vested interest in getting your product out there, you don't get that. You get an, a, a moment of awkward silence. Yeah, awkward pause. And Scott says, so Scott, how would you pronounce this name? W e i l d. Wield or wild? E i. Wailed. 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 Scott Wailed we is the rep. Wield wild. From Annandale Distillery. Scott Wield Wailed Wild. Wield From Wild. Wild, wild, wild from Anner. Wild. This is your moment of silence. Wild. He. Wild. Wild. Let's wild. You know, wild. I. Wild. Right. Wild. Yeah. Wild. Five. Five. Four. Four. Four, four, four bottles. Yeah. Four bottles. Okay. Okay. I'm not done being awkward. Oh, you're not done. Okay. Carry on. <laughs> the fluttering hey, and they were <laughs> oh, okay. okay and they're never gonna show this on their website <laughs> okay so uh, we're gonna start with this is something that I think every distillery should do yeah and I'm really excited about it okay okay so sure. we, we we know it's a wrap yes they sent us whiskey I'm gonna say this is the coolest thing what? any rep has ever done sure they have the two aged whiskeys they sent us hold on a second, hold on a, second. a rep yeah this is what a distillery is doing. No, 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 we got full size bottles. Okay. But first he okay, sent us. Okay, okay. Wield, weld, wild, wield, wade. First he sent us, because they have a peated and a non peated release. Sure. Right? Yeah. He sent us the new make <gasps> of the peated and the, the non peated. new make! Yes! Yeah! How cool is you. that, right? Yes. So we're going to use one glass each uh, for the new makes. Love the new make comparison. Yes! Yes! Isn't that cool? Because. That's a distillery decision, and I think that's a brilliant idea. Yes. And I love it. But one of the trickiest things. Uh, to be able to get your hands on is the new make, but it's one of the most so hard. fun comparisons whenever you can get the unaged whiskey. Yes. Never read, never met a barrel, uh, and compare it to the same spirit, but it has been aged in, in you know, a whiskey cast for a period of time. And to be able to find, okay, what was the new make bringing <laughs> to the table? What was the barrel bringing to the table? That's a lot of fun. It's tricky as hell to do, though. It is. Yeah. People don't want to do it. Uh, this is called the rat. Wait, wait, wait. Don't start with that one. Set that one down. That's the peated one. Okay. So this is called the Rascally Liquor. It's from a uh, quote from Robert Burns, the famous poet. Sure. And uh, I can't remember what this full quote was. Um, the rascal rascaliest liquor drank by the rascaliest of men. Okay. <laughs> super. It's the whiskey from that area. Super rascally. Yeah, so rascally. This is so, this is really overly ripe apples. Oh yeah, just oh, funky, over, musty, right. rich, it's like deep. The apples have dank. fallen off the tree. They've been sitting on the ground for like a week and a half, two weeks, and then you pull it off the ground and it's like really brown, mushy bits. And then you put some honey on it. Yeah. Go right, back yeah. for the honey. Yeah, there it is. And then right? there's a. And then there's like, weirdly, 
weirdly like a laundry fresh smell on top of that. Right. Laundry fresh smell on top of that overly ripe apple. So here's the cool thing. We're yeah. always lamenting the lack of lowland distilleries that we can get in the U.S. Yeah. This is a re reawakening okay. of a distillery that was silent for 90 years. What do you mean silent? Just, silent. Just, I mean that they made whiskey for 100 plus years okay. and then got closed to, so to econ defunct, economic reasons. Defunct for 100 defunct years. Defunct for 90 years okay. and then reawakened uh, four years ago. So now they have four-year-old whiskey, which we're about to try. Yeah. And this is the new make, right? right? So David and uh, the owner and Jim Swan, who helped work with Pindarin and oh, Pindarin, uh, the horse people, Kilomen, the, the the unicorn, yeah, 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 the, yeah, yeah, uh, Kilomen, mm -hmm. who I love, yeah, Kil Kilshoman, Kilshoman, Kilshoman. If yeah, you're spelling, Jim Swan's it. worked with both those guys. Okay, let's try it. So just the new make, oh, unpeated. I don't think we've mentioned the giant desk. Hmm. The reason there's a desk that with bottles on it yeah. is because we're in transition of moving the show from this vault to Vault 2.0. New location. Oh, yes. that tastes. That tastes really good. So there's something that you always hear distillers say. Ooh. Mm. Right? Yeah. Shockingly. And, and like a like a sweet. Ale, beer. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So there's something you hear distillers say, which is if you don't like the new make, you're not going to like the aged product. Yeah. Barrels can do some things, but they can't fix things. Certain things. So, and they're going to have more experience with new make than me. Oh, but I agree to a certain point. I know I, the relatively, relatively right. few new makes I have been able to get my hands on it compared to the aged whiskeys. I always like the aged whiskey a lot more. Well, yeah, 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 me too. Nine times out of ten, I like the aged whiskey a lot more. And the new make, I don't know. Potential. It's, what he's saying is, if you if there's something in there that makes you go, oh, right, a barrel is not going to solve oh, that. Oh, fair enough, fair enough. That, that's what I'm saying. Fair enough. Okay, right. You don't have to actually intrinsically love what the new make. Yeah, is. Yeah, what I'm saying is, if there's faults in there that you can't handle, right, a barrel is not going to solve that problem for you. Fair enough. So you need to like what's going in there. Well, you to need to have good product. You need to not find a problem. This reminds me, yes, this reminds me of Pachin, the Irish Pachin that we've tried. Okay. Oh, the smoky one. Good God. Smells more like a grain. You know what this reminds me of? I'm going to hand it to you, and I want you to remember going through the grain cathedral with Grace. Yeah. Uh, Smell it. Waterford Distillery in yeah. Ireland. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That super, super dusty agri malt. Agricultural yes. grain malted. Well, I don't think it was malted at that point. No. But it was barley on the warehouse floor. I did this one tastes mm. I would drink I would actually drink that yeah just make. by itself but by itself at the but house you really you know you've got to really like the smoky yeah no kidding yeah okay. that's like if they put a smokehouse in the middle of that barley warehouse and they're just like smoking meats smoking okay. the meats so now we've got man of words and man o swords man o swords is the peated one right. man of words is the unpeated one. Oh, I like that bottle isn't that beautiful yeah so man of words is I think referencing Robert Burns okay. and Man of Swords, if I remember correctly, is Robert Bruce. Right. There you go. I remember him from the the American version of Scottish whiskey, Scottish history. Yeah, yeah. Braveheart. Freedom. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's a documentary. I mean, I'm not enough for what they would consider it to be so. But. Right. Oh, this is four years old. Yeah. Smell that. Oh. It got really rounded off and smooth right? and made more delicate in the barrel. Wait, what's the proof, though? The proof on the new make versus this? This is a lot more to read. Tame. This is a bourbon, ex-bourbon, once used. Where's the percent? Oh, 61%. Wait, Bull, you're, Holy ta crap. You're, you're talking lies and slander. Dude, good on these guys Hold for on. releasing and smell that. Basically, cask strength smell whiskey. That. In a million years, would you guess 61%? No, never in a million years. I feel like I've got to be wrong about that, but it says it right there. Uh, their new make is 63.5. That means they're not proofing down even a little. Right. So, the reason why we're so surprised is the amount of aggressive alcohol burn that's it's not on the Not notes. there at all. I would say wow. maybe high 40s. High 40s, low 50s. Oh. Oh, I like that. That may be... I like that a lot. One of the most matured and subdued high proof whiskeys yeah. I've ever had. I, I agree completely. Yeah. And that can't be more than four years old. 
Yeah. Well. Good God. No. I wonder what the peated one's gonna be like. You know what? The, the alcohol never shows up as like a big, spiky, sharp poke or a burn. I'm it's kind not, of excited about it. It's not today. a sting. It's just a swelling up of this general heat across your entire tongue and your entire palate with what flavors actually coming out of here. Hold on, hold on. We gotta actually say flavors. Man, I, I'm gonna tell you something about this glass and mm -hmm. I'm gonna prejudice you a little bit and then about this smell. A little bit, there's honey, a little bit of a sweet cream. Again, I mean, I keep getting the sweet cream this week. It's so good. Yeah. Okay, so the peated there's one. A little bit of fruitiness in there. Right now in Austin, oh. we're in the, big, in the middle of Hatch Chili Oh, directions. Yeah, yeah. And the other day I was somewhere and I was, everything on the menu was hatch chili, I was smelling hatch chilies everywhere. Yeah. I just picked up a little bit of hatch chili. Did you? In this. Okay. This is, mixed with. This is the smoky. Mixed with the grain smell of the grain bin. This is Man of Sword? Mm-hmm. 60% oh. alcohol. Yeah. The, you see what I mean? Yeah, the barrel. Greenish. What's interesting is the barrel is knocking off all of the edge. Yes. Yes, it is. I didn't try it yet, though. What do you think? It's nice. It's very lovely. Can I say something outlandish? Because I'm usually very reserved. Oh. Very reserved and yeah. conservative. You're known for it, really. Hold on. If I'm looking for a little excitement, yeah. I'm drinking that new make. That new make, yeah. Yeah, this, like, this is not to take anything away this from this. This is classic, pretty right. smoky whiskey. Yes. Right? There's it's just right down the middle zone right. of good quality, yeah. not uh dramatic or struggling. Beautiful, and this is relatively young. Whiskey. I think to be relatively young, that's a damn nice whiskey. But for like a really interesting, funky adventure, oh, that new make is good. Yeah, I really like that. Yeah, <laughs> all right. The new make of the peated might be winning this entire taste competition for me. <laughs> uh, while, Second place would be right. the aged unpeated. Okay. Then the aged peated, right. and then the new make unpeated. Okay, so you mentioned the hatch green chili. Yeah. Uh, so they they stopped doing it, but Chewy's mm -hmm. Mexican restaurant mm -hmm. they had vegetarian fajitas. Yeah. And during this part of the year, they would do green the like hatch green chili uh, vegetarian fajitas. Yep. My wife ordered them, and in the back room of the restaurant, it's relatively low ceilings. It's like eight foot ceilings, and they they brought off this this. Like smoke pouring off of the fajitas as they're walking through, and there's so much. I guess it's uh, capsaicin, whatever mm -hmm. the thing is that mm -hmm. makes. It. There's like there's like thirty people sitting in this back room, and nobody could breathe. They're crying, they're okay. coughing. It's like we pepper sprayed the whole room. Dozens of people. Ah. <laughs> just, it just filled the room, and people were just gasping for like, air. Oh, jeez! They, like they had to leave, leave that part of the restaurant. Oh, and uh, the, that's amazing. The fajitas were delicious. <laughs> <laughs> well, but, dude, I am excited about this for a couple of reasons. One, yeah. because there's very few Lowland distilleries right now. Yeah. So it's cool to have another good one. Yeah, yeah. And um, and two, it's that it's really good. Yeah, it's astounding how good it is at such a young age. So this is the four bottles you're talking about. Yeah, but this is like A B comparison. One, two, three, and a third. Yeah, it's three bottles. Yeah, it's more like two and two thirds. So what else are we gonna try no, God, to make I'm up not... four? No, to no. make up four. I can't do it, man. I'll help you. I'm exhausted. I'm helping you. Are you ready for me? We can't open any of those. Those are all to be reviewed bottles. No, we can open them. Oh, I can pour you the blend that I created. Oh, you you want to try that? You're talking about that? That's all that's left in the whole world right there. You want to try it? So this really is rare whiskey for this a This is super rare, <laughs> actually. So uh, I made this whiskey for a movie. You blended the whiskey from yes. what? So there's a movie. Well, I'll tell you when you try it. Right. There's a, a friend of ours wrote a movie. Uh, script it got turned into a film it was aired at all the film festivals and in the movie they drank a whiskey yeah. that's called Diamondback sure. and he said hey would you create a whiskey called Diamondback yes it needs to be as described on the bottle it needs to be Pete from Scotland but Venom from Texas yes that was my marching that was all the only information I got marching orders make a whiskey that could be described as right. Pete from Scotland Venom from Texas you got a Venom guy I got a Venom guy are you ready we all got Venom guys in Texas Here's the so oh, here's what I'm gonna say before I wait 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 don't hold it yet. When you create a blend, it, when you first mix it, it's really lively and it jumps all over. Sure. And after about a month, it will settle and marry. 
Okay. This one has been in this bottle now for three years. It still is not settled. Three damn years? It's still not settled. Oh. <laughs> you got a good Venom guy. It is still struggling. This blend is still struggling. <laughs> Here's but I still love it. There's that shard wood. Yeah. And then... There's that really... It's, uh, what is that? Like, the, this springy, lively element. What is that? Well, that's it, right? Yeah. It's still like, whoa! There it man. is. Man! It's like, uh, just wave this rush of smokiness and whoa. Uh, yes! That's the sound of the whiskey. So, it's the Pete from Scotland, Venom from Texas. Right. It's still going. What's the blend? Right now. What's the blend? It is... Because... 47% Kulila 12. Okay. 47%... Cask strength blue corn bourbon from uh, Balcones. Okay. So corn whiskey. Yes. Basically. Hold on. Hold on. How many whiskeys are in here? Three. Because. You know what the third is? Hold on, hold on. We're two thirds of the way. There's only 6% of the third whiskey. We're two thirds of the way from this actually being able to be turned into a product because Kulilu? Mm hmm. We could probably get Kulilu. We can't get the third thing. There's absolutely no way we can do it, but we could try. To, we could test it with brimstone, and then well, we can totally the, do what's it. What's the third thing? Octomore. Oh yeah. Six percent octomore. Yeah. We can't really. Yeah. They don't really source out there. But you can you, now go back and taste it. Blue corn bourbon. Right. That's, that's, that's lovely. Yeah. Coolie the twelve. Mm-hmm. Mm, because and Octomore because I think we can get the Belconis blue corn. Yeah, we can. I think we can get the Kulila. We probably can. And then the Octomore is kind of, uh, blah, 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 but it's no. the least percentage, the least represented. Yeah, but it put it over the top. Like yeah, when I was no. doing all the blending. Right, six percent changed everything. Okay, all right. Maybe we find something in the direction. That's there. why I said brimstone. Here's fighting, stealing, and drinking. If you fight, may you fight for a friend. You steal, may you steal a lover's heart. And if you drink, may, may you drink, drink with us. us. Hey, thanks for hanging out with us in the Whiskey Vault. Don't forget to throw in a like, hit that subscribe button on the bottom right, and drop a question or comment down below.